Sorry, <laughs> I'm a little late because uh, they only copied the PDF file there. So, okay, so let's start it. Uh, my name is Zhi Pingyao. I'm uh, the Leatherwork Hardware Engineer of Facebook. Today I'm going to introduce Backpack, Facebook's uh, 100 gig modular switch. Here's uh, Backpack as, uh, you know, 3D rendering pictures. We have uh, one demo unit in Facebook booth and also communities have one. Uh, unfortunately, we, because we put all our new chassis in the production to do the test, the, the unit in our booth is the old EVT unit, but it's just cosmetic change. Uh, what is Backpack? You know, when we uh, started our 100 gig network uh, hardware development, we developed Wedge 100 first. Wedge 100 is our first 100 gig uh, uh, TUA switch, and then we start to work on the, the modular switch, the backpack, around 128 ports. Uh, Facebook have uh, some philosophy of belief. First, we believe open, openness, right? So all the hardware will contribute to OCP, and the software is all open source, f force and uh, OpenBMC. The second is uh, we believe disaggregations, and not only the, we disaggregate the software and the hardware, but also we we based on simple building block, we simply copy them 12 times to become a backpack. So the whole backpack actually consists of 12 switch element. The third one is um, in order to support our DC operations, so we physically separate the control module uh, from the switch SA. I'm going to talk about it in detail later. The third model we believe is uh, we uh, we want to manage our switch like a server. So the whole backpack chassis is like a bunch of servers, right? It will be managed by BMC and it, it, it will be deployed and provisioned like servers, just like a regular Facebook server because we have a you know, very large uh, server suite. This architecture enable you know, much faster software push and software update. We support new features of fix bugs very quickly, sometimes like a weekly push. Okay, so backpack, what is backpack? It's the open modular switch. The hardware architecture is Ethernet only. We do not have a high gig. We want to be independent. Uh, it's the Ethernet only interface between non-kind of fabric and external. That what topology is a very common spine leaf topology, you know, the class topology used universally in, our, in all the data center across the globe. Uh, the switch software is all open source, FBOS and OpenBMC. Now, for manageability, it's managed by BMC, just like a server. So in every server, we have a BMC and control power on and off, provisioning, and all those stuff through the BMC. It is a 128 port switch, QSAP form factors. Where to use backpack? You know, Facebook has, Facebook data center fabric network has a three tier. We call it, uh, uh, the bottom tier is uh, rack switch. We use wedge 100 today. The second tier is, uh, we call it the fabric switch. The top tier is a spine switch. Fabric switch and spine switch, we can use backpack. And it just software different hardware is the same. Switch element, just as I said, you know, whole backpack is built, up, uh, built upon fully disaggregated uh, concept, right? We come out a switch element concept. The switch element has uh, three pieces, three components. The first is a Tomahawk, Tomahawk SA, that's like a data plan. The second is a Kami CPU module, Intel CPU battery module. It is like, you know, control plan, right? The third is BMC, management plan. So we clearly separate data plan, control plan, and management plan, and pack them together as a switch element. So Wedge 100, you can think like a single switch element. For backpack, then we pack 12 switch elements together to become a backpack chassis. Uh, how to connect those uh, 12 switch elements together? We use uh, you know, traditional class topology, right? So we have a four fabric on top. Each fabric car has one switch element. We have a four LAN car on the bottom. Each LAN car has two switch elements. So totally there are 12 switch elements.
you know, just talk about a concept, just conceptual design about the backpack right now. I'm talking about some detailed implementation challenges in Wedge 100. Uh, the first is, uh, you know, the signal in integrity is much more difficult than 40 gig time. The, the physical speed is 25 gig BPS right now. Previous generation is only 10 gig, right? The physical speed uh, like 2.5 times than before. So we have to optimize for the signal integrity. The second is uh, uh, the switch ethic and the optics has much higher power consumption than 40 gig time. The switch ethic uh, Tomahawk is close to 200 watts per maximum, and the, the 100 gig optics usually is close to 3.5 watts, right? The 40 gig is roughly one watt, so it's like a three, more than three times increase of the power of, of, for the optics. So we have to design a chassis to optimize for thermal. The third that is um, our data center operation want uh, you know, the easy repair or maintenance of uh, this chassis. The reason is uh, our data center operation engineer, and probably every guy have a thousand of devices to manage, right? If any failure there, it's so difficult to, if uh, you have to take out the box and uh, repair something, it's so difficult for them. Then we design something you know, in this chassis to make it much easier for tech ops to repair and maintain, do maintenance. Based on all those, uh, to address those all challenges, right, we come out of this uh, innovative design. First is a fully disaggregate, disaggregated architectures, 12 switch element. The second is uh, you know, orthogonal direct chassis architectures. We decide to use orthogonal direct architectures because because we want to optimize for SI, we want to optimize for the thermal. So all the major module car inside this chassis is like mated orthogonally. I'm going to talk about it later. So land car horizontally, fabric car vertically mated orthogonally, right? The SCM vertically and HCP horizontally mated orthogonally. The reason is that to open up all the chassis internal space to provide much, much better thermal performance, air channel, front to air, front to back air flow. Uh, the third one is uh, we implement very sophisticated thermal policy to optimize, to support our low cost 55C CWDM4 dash OCP optics. So you can go to, I think the cumulus have a demo, you can see the whole big chest is very quiet because we optimize for the thermal. Here's the chassis, the cross section of view. Uh, it is orthogonal design, right? So you can see four line car on the front, plugging the chassis horizontally. Four fabric car on the rear side, plugging the chassis vertically. They made it orthogonally inside the chassis. The key is that we disaggregated data plan, control plan, and management plan. Oops. I think I cannot come back. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some details inside this chassis. So system components. We have a LAN car, we call it LC, fabric car called FAB, system and control module, that's the common ECPU module, like control plan for the ASIC, chassis management module, the CMM. Uh, HCP is like control plan, control, uh, horizontal control plan, that's like a control back plan. Vertical control plan, VCP-L, VCP-R, and bus bar assembly. Bus bar assembly have uh, multiple pieces, like uh, HBAR-V bar and HPD. Fan control module, FCB, and power distribution board, PDB. Here's the chassis view, assembly view. You can see number four is the chassis itself. On the front, number three is for LAN car. LAN car plug in the chassis horizontally. Number two, is uh, CMM and SCM. It's like a small CPU module, right? Plug into the chassis vertically. Number one is the four PSU plug into the chassis, uh, you know, from the front. Number five is fabric car plug into the chassis vertically from the real side. Number six is the fan tray. Fan tray actually plug into the fabric car. Chassis front view. You can see the top half is four line car. 
each LAN card, just, I just mentioned, right, have two switch elements. You can see left and right, the color is slightly different, the yin and the yang, right? In the middle section is all the CMM and the SCM. The very left slot and the very right slot is CMM, chassis management module. In the middle S slot is SCM. And the bottom U is PSU. We have a four PSU, each PSU supports three kilowatts. Chassis uh, rear view, four fabric car, plug in the chassis vertical, line, right? Each fabric car have a three fan tray. Totally we have a 12 fan tray. That's why we can provide much better thermal performance for the whole chassis. Front view without land car and the fabric car. So you can see the chassis actually is almost empty. There is no blockage inside the chassis. That's why we can provide much, much better thermal performance. The airflow is front to back. You can see inside the chassis, we have uh, some um, passive control plan, like a VCP left, VCP right. In the middle section, you can see the HCP, or HCP is horizontal control plan. That's basically connect the SCM to the uh, land car and the fabric car. Real side view without the fabric car. You can see VCPL, VCP right inside the chassis. Uh, the four slot of the fabric car, we use some divider to divide them, divide them into four air separate air channels. Also have a HPD, is a horizontal power distribution unit, provide power for the SCM and the fabric car. <laughs> Side view, this is cross-sectional side view. You can see four land cars plugging the chassis horizontally and the four fabric on the rear side, they made it orthogonally. On the bottom side is the, is, is the bus bar. Land car, land car has two switch elements, two tomahawk on it. And the front panel we support 32 QSAP port and the rear side actually is also 32, 100 gig. Four orthogonal connectors there you can see. We also have uh, two DMO direct magnet also going to connect uh, to connect to the VCP. Here's the front and rear view of the LAN car. LAN car 32 port, we have two switch ASIC. The left 16 port connect to the left switch ASIC and the right 16 port connect, connect to the right uh, switch ASIC. And on the real side, four data connector, data orthogonal connect. And the very left and the very right actually is the control plan, VCP, uh, VCP, right, the control plan signals. Basically, the PCI interface, R-squad interface, some um, management is the interface goes through the, the VCP in connector. Fabrica, Fabrica has one switch element, one switch essay, right? So uh, it also has uh, the fan control board, FCB, as a mezzanine car carried inside, inside this uh, package. On the left side, there are four uh, orthogonal direct connectors that actually connect to the LAN car. There's another one on the, the left, in the middle and left, the bottom side actually is for the control plan. We call it the VCP control plan connectors. This is the PCB of Fabrica. You can see the switch ASIC layers. We have some CPLD, DMA connector, and BMC on it. We also have a management OV business switch on it just for the management uh, uh, connections. Fan control board. Fan control board is a mezzanine car of uh, the fabric car. It has a, it supports three uh, fan tray, 80 by 80 millimeter fan tray. We use the CPRD to control all the fan, fan PWM and read the fan speed status. It is a mezzanine car of the fabric car. Oh, the, the CPLD is managed by CMM, uh, C BMC. So CMM is like a chassis management module. They control uh, like a global features right inside the chassis. Here's the fabric assembly. The fan tray plug in the rear side is hot pluggable. You can see from the connector side, so four connectors to the, to the four LAN car and the one, one control mid plan connector. CMM, chassis management order. The whole chassis have a two chassis CMM, fully redundant. 
each CMM actually support uh, three major functions. You can think CMM like a TOR switch of the 12 switch element. So it has a 16 port gigabit Ethernet switch for, for like a TOR of the management port inside the chassis. The second major function is uh, it support the UART because we have a multiple CPU inside chassis. All the UART connect to CMM. CMM work like a terminal server for the whole chassis. The third major function is a chassis management r c bus. So CMM have a global view of the chassis. It can control the fan, control all the 12 fans in, on the real side, and also can monitor the temperature sensor across the chassis. Every module car, like a LAN car, fabric car, or the SCM, the CMM, has inlet and outlet temperature sensor. The CMM has the, can access all those sensors. So basically, you can think of CMM as a three major functions, right? A TUR of uh, the chassis and the terminal server of the chassis and also the management, the you know, chassis management of the chassis. SCM, system control module. Sys system control module is like a control plan for the switch ASIC. It can support two COMME switch modules. Uh, one COMME switch module mapped to one switch element, one map to one switch ASIC. There's one six by 12 you know, orthogonal connector connect to the HCP. We have a two skew of uh, this SCM. For LAN car, we populate two SCM, uh, two COMME modules. For fabric car, we'll populate one COMME modules. So the baseball are the same, we just uh, populate one or two COMME there. HCP, this is a one of the passive, uh, like back plan inside the chassis, the full control plan, horizontal control plan. So you can see on the bottom side, there are 10 connectors, right? Those two CMM plus eight uh, SCM plug, plug in to this control back plan. On the rear side, there are four connectors actually is connect to the fabric. VCP, vertical control plan. Vertical control plan is uh, mated to the HCP and provide the control interface to the four LAN car. Each LAN car has two switch elements, so that's why we have a left and a right at uh, VCP. Bus bar. Bus bar basically have a three pieces, and uh, in the edge bar actually it's horizontal, it connect to the four PSU. So four PSU is like a load sharing. The V bar, vertical bar, actually provide the power to four LAN car. And HPD in the middle actually provide power for the fabric car and SCM, CMM. System power consumption, we measure it actually at a full load. The typical power consumption actually is not very high, it's 26, like 2700. Because uh, we optimize for thermal, right? So we can let the fan running between 30 and 40% at room temperature and still provide enough margin for the optics and the whole chassis system. So that's why the chassis is quite very quiet. Thermal design. So you can see the fan, 12 fan on the rear side. The fan trays, we use the condo rotating 12, uh, 80 by 80 millimeter by 80 millimeter fan. So actually it's very, very, very powerful. We also have a very uh, thermal improved LAN car front panel design, so that's why it can provide much better thermal performance to cool the QSIP optics. So all the modules inside chassis have a multiple temperature sensors, so CMM can have a global view of uh, the chassis. Right? It monitor every temperature sensor inside the chassis, then control the fan speed to provide the much optimized the thermal cooling for the whole chassis. That's why we test it, we can make sure, you know, like 35% the full, the, we can cool the whole chassis without any problem at room temperature. Optic transceiver, you know, Backpack use uh, QSIP28 optic transceivers. Uh, it's just, uh, we choose to use CWDM4 or CWDM4-OCP form factors, uh, optics, right? But it also support all the other QSIP uh, MSAs, such as SR4, LR4, CR4, etc. Of course, it's backward compatible to 40 gig previous generations, like uh, you know, 40 gig SR4 and 40 gig LR4 optics. 
in use. This is our first 100 gig backpacks which carry real life traffic in our data center. Right now we also have dozens of backpacks in our production network. OCP contributions. We contribute, we already contribute our design to the OCPs. So we have our OCP specifications. So we have the full design packages. The mechanical design is still 2D because uh, we are doing the final hard tooling right now. So we, after we finish the design, we will contribute the full design package to the OCP. Our ODM partner is Celestica. Uh, I think within a few months, you can order this chassis directly from Celestica. We also have some sort of party software and right? Cumulus, uh, Slapload, or Broadcom. The bottom side is the FTP website of the OCP. You guys can download the spec on this slide from there. That's all from me. Thank you very much. To uh, Q and A at the very end, mm -hmm. so now we're going to hear about uh, Wedge One Hundred. Okay. Okay. Hello. So are we ready? So my name is Xu Wang, and I'm a hardware engineer in the networking hardware team at uh, Facebook Infrastructure. So today I'm going to talk about uh, Wedge 100S. It is also a refresher of uh, Wedge 100, since a lot of content here is the same between Wedge 100 and the Wedge 100S. Whoops, the wrong way. <laughs> So Wedge 100S is the enhanced version of uh, Wedge 100. We announced Wedge 100 about one year ago, and uh, it was accepted by OCP. And uh, it has uh, everything we need in the data center, data plane forwarding, routing protocol support, manageability like a server, and uh, supervisory functions such as rack monitoring. And uh, the base platform is a one U pizza box chassis that fits a 19 inch rack. And we designed an adapter to mount it into 21 inch open rack. After the initial release, we continued to enhance the platform. And in Wedge 100S, we upgraded uh, the microserver from Intel Bay Trail SOC to Broadwell DE. And uh, we also added hardware support for the software security on both the microserver and the BMC. And, uh, well, so Wedge 100 itself is like our second generation top of rack switch with 32 100 gig ports. And when we designed this box, we kept the design philosophy of a minimalist philosophy at Facebook infrastructure. The data plane only has one chip, Broadcom Tomahawk. It's a finest design. And uh, we also try to keep it modular. For the microserver, it is sitting on a standard form factor County Express uh, module. And it is easy to upgrade from one CPU to another from hardware's perspective. The control plane software is uh, FBOS, or it's a network OS. And the OpenBMC handles hardware management and monitoring functions. Both are open sourced. So we use Wedge 100 or Wedge 100S to connect our next generation servers that uh, come with 25 gig or 50 gig NICs. And uh, from 40 gig to 100 gig, as you probably know, the optics have higher power consumptions. For example, the 100 G based CWDM4 transceivers, they have an upper limit of three and a half watts, and it requires enhanced system thermal design. And uh, Wedge 100, of course, can be mounted into Open Rack V2. It gets the power from the Rack Power Bus Bar. And uh, it uh, has uh, the Rack Monitor to get the status of the power supplies for the complete Rack. 
And uh, the broad world DE microserver has higher performance compared with Intel Bay Trail. And uh, it has better reliability, availability, and serviceability features that comes with a Xeon class CPU. And it has uh, Intel trusted execution technology. So we can have uh, consistent uh, security implementation across the switches and the regular servers. The hardware design of Wedge 100S is fully open. You can download all the design files from opencompute.org. The switch itself is uh, managed just like a regular server in our fleet. As a matter of fact, both the microserver and uh, the BMC run a lot of common utilities that uh, we also use on the servers, on the regular servers. And we have uh, this uh, concept of uh, switching element, and Zipin already talked about it, and it consists of these uh, hardware building blocks. From generation to generation, we can change the components, but we keep the overall structure. For example, from wedge 40 to wedge 100, we change the switch ASIC and the CPU, but uh, the BMC is the same. Now from wedge 100 to wedge 100S, we replace the CPU, but everything else is the same. This is a nice exploded view of Wedge 100S from my colleague Jimmy Nang there. And uh, at the bottom is uh, the 21-inch adapter for open rack. There are two PCBs inside of the box, one switch main board and one rack mount and fan control board. All of the major components are on the main switch board. The big heat sink of Tomahawk, of course, is uh, easy to spot. Early in our design cycle, we worried about, uh, we worried about the cooling of Tomahawk, but uh, it turns out uh, it's uh, equally challenging, if not all, to cool the optics when all of the 32 ports are populated with uh, three and a half watt modules. Uh, the Broadwell DE CPU comes with a higher TDP, so the Common Express module has a larger heat sink, and uh, yeah, it's right beside the Tomahawk heat sink in this uh, view. And this is a top view of uh, Wedge 100S. Um, well, there is a limitation that uh, comes with a finest design. Yeah, as you can see, the PCB tracements from the Tomahawk ASIC to all the QSFP 28 ports are not exactly the same. At uh, 25 gig per lane speed, this PCB tracement plays an important role in the overall channel budget. So for the edge ports, the loss is relatively higher and we allocate uh, optics and shorter DAC cables to these ports and the middle ports can be used for longer DAC cables. This approach enables us to keep, uh, well, to, to be able to meet the end-to-end -end channel budget for all of the ports. As you can see, the Broadwell DE Common Express module extends outside the switch mainboard. It is a Common Express Type 6 basic form factor 95 by 125 millimeters. So in Wedge 100, it is a Type 6 compact form factor 95 by 95 millimeters. When we designed the original Wedge 100, we designed in extra mounting holes so we can migrate to this uh, slightly larger form factor without uh, modifying the switch mainboard or the chassis. Well, serviceability is always important for large-scale deployment. That's why at this generation, when we designed the heat sink for the Common Express module, the DIMM can be swapped without removing the heat sinks. Most of the front panel space of Wedge 100 is occupied by QSAP 28 ports, and we have the BMC serial console and uh, the management Ethernet at the left edge. Well, they are very important in the provisioning and management of the switch in the field. The microserver console can be accessed through the BMC. That's a serial overlay. 
And uh, the LEDs on the QSAP28 ports are also important. They help the technicians when they hook up the switch in the data center when they plug in the uplink optics or the fibers. Most of the throwable components of Wedge 100 are in the rear, that's uh, the power supply unit and the fans. The fan tray has a toolless latch design for easy removal and installation. And there are three rack mount ports. They are basically serial ports with uh, RS-485 physical signaling, and they are connected to the rack power supply unit in OpenRack V2. There is a JBox GPIO port. It's basically multiple general purpose IOs controlled by the BMC. And this is a 21-inch adapter tray. We can have a 12-volt DC power cable that connects to the rack power bar rack power bus bar and uh, the 12 volt power pass through card inside the 19 inch chassis. Oh yeah, this is the power pass through card. It has the exact form factor as the AC DC PSU and uh, by designing this power pass through card we can use this box in both 19 inch and 21 inch racks without modifying the box itself. Well, the QSAP28, each QSAP28 port can have multiple modes supported by Broadcom Tomahawk, like 100 gig, 250 gig, 425 gig, and it's also backward compatible to the 10 gig per lane mode, like 40 gig or 410 gig. And uh, we tested Wedge 100 with uh, CWDM-OCP transceivers and uh, we also work with other MSA compliant optics at 100 gig or at 40 gig. From the top of rack switch to the servers down below, we have uh, direct attached copper cables. It can be like 100 gig to 250 gig or 100 gig to 425 gig. The cable lengths we tested with uh, one meter, two meter, three meter, wire gauge like 28, AWG 28 or AWG 30. Well, the length is uh, decided by the server location in the rack. So we can have uh, optimum cable management for this rack. Like I, well, like I mentioned earlier, the, 50, the CWDM4-OCP transceivers come with uh, relax the temperature limit. It's uh, 15 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius case temperature. At a 35 degrees Celsius maximum ambient temperature, we have a 20 degree temperature rise limit. So we need to have uh, five powerful counter-rotating fans in the rear. The airflow is uh, front to back. And uh, well, if we get rid of the rack mount ports, we can have six fans, but uh, we still need the rack mount ports. There are air baffles for the PSUs, so they can have separate uh, air channel to avoid air recycling because the PSUs come with uh, relatively weaker fans than those five counter-rotating fans. The OpenBMC constantly monitors multiple board-mounted temperature sensors inside this box and it tries to keep the fans to run as slowly as possible while keeping the major components temperature in check. So this way we can achieve uh, maximum cooling efficiency. Well, basically it means to cool the component with minimum fan power consumption. There are a lot of interfaces between the Calm Express module and the baseboard. Most of the interfaces are the same when we migrated from Baytrail to Broadwell DE. The major change is on the PCI Express link from the CPU to Tomahawk. It's now by four or four lane instead of two lane. The speed is still at Gen 2, and uh, it provides a double management port bandwidth at uh, Tomahawk. So power efficiency is important for any data center equipment, even at the uh, top of a rack switch level. 
It's like uh, one watt saved by the top of a rack switch is one watt more can be consumed by the servers. So in the process of selecting, selecting the best uh, Broadwell DE CPU skill for this box, we tested the different uh, skills with different uh, BIOS settings. And this uh, process resulted uh, the D1508 skill and uh, with its associated BIOS setting that uh, gives us better performance than Bay Trail, but uh, keeping the power consumption increase to a minimum. 10 minute warning. Okay. Okay, and uh, if required, we can increase the power consumption. Well, not increase the power consumption. We can increase the performance of the CPU by changing the BIOS setting, but of course, it comes with uh, power consumption cost. So we have uh, contributed Wedge 100 specification and design package to OCP. You can download from OCP from the link there. And uh, there are several third-party software vendors in the OCP community that supports Wedge 100. And it should be easy to migrate to Wedge 100S because, well, actually, I'm not aware of any application software layer difference between Wedge 100 and Wedge 100S. The differences are like in the BIOS and in firmware. So we believe uh, OCP and the openness provide a great collaboration environment for us to evolve hardware and software designs. And we encourage the community to pick up, to collaborate, and eventually to contribute back to the community. Okay, thank you, that's my talk. Hello, uh, my name is Akın Koyuncuoğlu. I'm a system hardware design engineer working at Barefoot Networks. Um, today, we're, I'm gonna cover uh, what we are doing at Barefoot uh, in terms of our uh, uh, two system designs that we, uh, we have with our new uh, Topino Switch ASIC. So, Barefoot, uh, we are located in Palo Alto. It's a startup, and uh, so we design world's fastest and fully programmable Ethernet switch. Uh, it's uh, 6.5 terabit per second uh, uh, switch ASIC with uh, P4 uh, programmable uh, Ethernet switch. Uh, so port configurations are uh, 6500 gigi or 40 gigi. Uh, and then we can do independent breakout to 50, 40, 25, or 10 gigabit Ethernet. Uh, we have a fully programmable packet processing pipeline and, uh, uh, and a CBH.P4 uh, forwarding plane. Uh, CPU interface is, is a PCIe Gen 3 by four lanes uh, to our switch ASIC. Um, So we do have a fully uh, software stack to work with our Tofina ASIC. Uh, it's, uh, and um, you can see in the slide that uh, the, the software can uh, fully program our Tofino ASIC in the bottom uh, for what the user wants to program for, for the forwarding plane. So, so we have designed two uh, switches. One is a 3.2 terabit per second. We call it Wedge 100 BF. Um, so it's derived from uh, Wedge 100, Facebook uh, OCP uh, contribution design. 
but we have done uh, improvements to the uh, board layout PCB to improve design and save cost as well. Uh, so this is the picture and we basically it's a one RU uh, uh, design. So we do have the uh, Tofino ASIC in the middle. Uh, there is no heat sink just to show you guys uh, the chip. Um, so we have two different packages. Uh, one is a uh, smaller, we call it small, Tofino small, which is the 3.2 terabit per second switch ASIC. And the other one is a 6.5 terabit. It's a bigger, larger package size. So the one RU design, uh, 32 port, 100 gig, uh, is, is using the smaller ASIC, uh, smaller package ASIC. Um, so it has uh, two redundant power supplies uh, and a redundant fan module. And, uh, and then uh, it has 32 front panel QSAP 28 pores made out of two by two QSAP cages. Um, so it does have, uh, the, the, the front panel is similar to the Facebook design. It has the BMC console and Ethernet port on the left. And it has the same debug connector and as well as the, um, the QSAP cages and the LEDs. Um, so overall, uh, it has uh, a main board, main PCB, uh, the fan tray in the back, as well as the ComExpress CPU module, which is uh, based on uh, Broadwell DE uh, 1517 uh, CPU module. So this is a picture with Wedge 100 and the uh, uh, barefoot Wedge 100 BF. Uh, side by side view. Uh, you can see the uh, differences perhaps. Uh, this, this, this PCB is done shorter so that uh, we can save money, uh, costs reduced, and then it has an M.2 128 gigabit SSD, a Com Express module, the fan tray, redundant power supplies. Uh, so it's the same depth in terms of chassis design, but uh, uh, printed circuit board is uh, shorter. So this is our second uh, design. It's a 2RU 65 port, uh, uh, 100 gig uh, switch, uh, top of rack switch. And uh, it, it has two levels of uh, design, PCB design. We call it a lower and upper uh, boards. So the upper boards, uh, upper board actually houses the, our uh, switching ASIC. And it has its own airflow channel on the top side. And it does uh, drive the f first 32 pores on the top. And, uh, and then the lower board here on the right is, is, is basically housing the Com Express module on the control plane, BMC, and everything else. And also there is the FIS on the lower board to extend the uh, reach that goes uh, the half of the surface is routed to the lower board through the high speed mezzanine connectors. These are all uh, 25 gig uh, rated um, stack connectors. So, and then the lower board has the FIs as well as the, uh, the remaining 32 ports. And we do have a single QSFP 65th port that is on the upper left corner, uh, individual single QSFP 28 uh, port. So, and this, uh, it has the similar, uh, it has the same fan trays. Uh, so, but we do have two of those. So one for the upper fan tray and one for the lower section and an upper, upper fan tray and they are fully independent. Uh, sorry. One minute. And uh, okay, so the upper fan tray cools the ASIC and then lower is, is for the rest of the system. Uh, so CPU again, uh, Com Express uh, and then Intel 1517 uh, processor, four core. And we do have eight gigabyte DDR4 SD RAM in the system as well as under 28 gig SSD. It's a BMC A speed. And we do uh, platform software as well. Um, so as a summary, two platforms, one RU, two RU, 32 ports and 65 ports. 100 gigi and uh, drive from wedge 100 and then uh, we have done enhancements to uh, reduce cost and improve uh, uh, quality and uh, it's a user programmable forwarding plane P4, Tofino and the Capilano 
and includes the world's fastest and uh, fully programmable uh, switching AZ. I think that's it. Hi, everybody. Thanks for attending this session. I'm uh, Alec Fishman. I'm from uh, Kavion. And uh, I'll be presenting our contribution to OCP wedge 100 uh, c Kavion. <clears throat> so in, in general, the highlights of a 100C, it's a 3.2 terab terabit a one RU form factor a, a, a switching a platform with a, a 32 ports of a QSFP28. We support any combination of 20, 10, 25, 40, 50, 100 gig interfaces. Our design is actually based on the original design done by Facebook of the original wedge, submitted last year. and. We did very minor changes, just basically replacing a Broadcom ASIC with the our ASIC, and the rest of the things are quite identical. A couple of words about the our ASIC. So our ASIC is the first programmable ASIC that actually is shipping and in deployment today. And you can go to our booth, Kavium booth here, and we can show you a wedge platform and a wedge pl platform running FBOS and other things that we do with our ASIC. A little bit more details about explained ASIC. So we are in production since Q3 2016, which is six months by now. We are shipping our ASIC through leading OEMs like Arista and other guys. We also have a close partnerships with the ODM, so for white box or bright box type of solutions. Our ASIC is available as well. Uh, uh, today it deploys, I cannot mention specific names, but we have including, deployments including very large data centers today using our explain. It really works in production. Uh, <clears throat> our ASIC is a fully programmable, so you can actually you can program the pipeline itself, uh, and also we provide users with full control over the embedded uh, forwarding uh, tables and functions. We provide also, uh, I mean, users, they can define their own network profile, but we also provide network profiles uh, that we think are optimized for uh, typical deployments in data centers. We have a routing centric profile with over a million routes using just embedded memory for telco type of deployments and uh, open flow uh, type of deployments. In addition to programmability advantages, also our chip incorporates a lot of uh, architectural you know, f fundamental advantages such as uh, 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 very large, uh, sh fully shared buffer, so it can absorb very large uh, bursts, and advanced uh, all kind of uh, functions, including uh, instrumentation and uh, telemetry. <clears throat> For the wedge 100 design, actually, is <coughs> I'm sorry, it's a, a similar, identical actually to the original design of wedge 100. You know, the front panel and the rear panel view are identical. Also, the port mapping is one to one. A block diagram. So we also, similar to the original Facebook 100, uh, uh, Wedge 100, we also support on the same main board PCB. It's possible to build 9-inch uh, uh, plot racks and 21-inch. All the files, uh, all the production files that have, been, have been submitted to OCPs are currently under review. And uh, today they are uh, available through this uh, OCP Open Compute uh, link. And it contains all the production files, all the documentation, specification, everything is available. And once it's uh, accepted by OCP, it can go to production by each one of you. So the value proposition, the things that we bring into, into uh, this uh, industry, I think that uh, you know, Facebook and OCP and the other uh, community members, they, they, they drive this uh, tremendous shift into a disaggregated type of solution that uh, uh, customers can, can build their own hardware and can choose uh, different uh, software options to deploy and build, build solutions that are optimized to their uh, needs. And I think that we perfectly fit into this uh, p picture. So using uh, Wedge 100C, it's possible to leverage the, the wedge itself, uh, hardware uh, benefits, advantages. It's a field proven, cost optimized design. Open BMC that allows to manage uh, switching platforms uh, as, uh, as compute nodes. 
1921 inch uh, 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 skews. Now our ASIC, it brings this uh, field proven uh, programmability as well as architectural advantages, large bursts that I've mentioned and stuff like that, instrumentation, embedded telemetries that we support. And we also support, uh, I think that maybe except for Cumulus, all other uh, softwares are ported to our ASICs. So FBOS we are demonstrating in our booth and uh, other platforms are ported with Explient and we'll be working to make them run on a uh, wedge 100 c In addition to that, we also support uh, natively all these uh, open interfaces like a SI in the OpenFlow for a, for a other a NOSIS integration or for just the SDN controllers. Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, to Facebook and Barefoot and Cavium. And after my admonishments that we end on time, we're already late. So we'll spend a little bit of time. You can move to the other room or people from the other room can come in and then uh, we'll start the next talk in two to three minutes.